Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of the Neutral Zone Rewind podcast. Uh, my name is Rylan Close, and I am joined by my co-host, Mitchell Porter. Uh, we have a ton of dodgeball to go over from this past weekend. We had four different tournaments all across the country. A uh, lot of great matchups, a lot to talk about. Um, so, yeah, we'll get right into it. We'll start with uh, the Cyclone Clash. Uh, Mitch, what do we got for that? The Cyclone Clash was a doubleheader tournament between the University of Nebraska and Wisconsin Platteville. Funnily enough, this uh, tournament or doubleheader was a neutral site venue at Iowa State University. So thank you to the Cyclones for letting us use your uh, facilities. It was a day of one really high team and one really low team, as the scores did uh, show that. Nebraska won both games handedly. The first game of the doubleheader was 6-0, and they followed it up with a 5-0 win over Platteville in the second game. There's not much to talk about from this game. It <clears throat> looked a lot better on paper, and unfortunately sometimes uh, dodgeball is not one on paper, but it's one on the court, and Nebraska definitely showed that. So maybe they're on the rise back again, as we've seen this Nebraska team be up and down recently. Uh, Heading yeah. back to... Oh. Yeah, sorry. No, I'll, I'll go over a couple things. Uh, yeah, um, definitely decisive wins for UNL. They absolutely look like the team to beat in the Central Division. Uh, they are very strong there. Um, as far as Platteville goes, uh, you know, they're missing Caleb Newell, All-American. It's very hard to replace that level of talent. I do expect uh, when these teams reload and see each other again in the future that it will be a little bit closer of a matchup. But um, yeah, UNL definitely looking like the team to beat in the Central right now. Uh, and yeah, moving on, we'll go over to the uh, Maryland Madness Tournament. Yes, so in Maryland, we had uh, Maryland, James Madison, and uh, Virginia, along with the, the B teams from Maryland and JMU at this tournament. And it was a very great, it was a very good day for uh, dodgeball overall, and some very interesting and close matchups. The first matchup of the day saw Maryland beat uh, Virginia, 2-1. to one. A close affair between the Cavaliers and the Terrapins. Virginia showing that they can hang uh, with Maryland, who showed to be a pretty improved team, especially towards the end of the year, uh, towards Nationals. JMU then played Virginia, and JMU won 5 nothing in a game that I think everyone could predict how that game it was going to go. Virginia was close in every point, though. Uh, JMU just had more firepower and put the nail into the coffin against Virginia during that matchup. The battle of the B teams between Maryland and JMU occurred, and Maryland's B team came out came out on top, 2-1. to one. JMU finished off the day with a victory over Maryland in a very close affair, one of the best matchups of the season so far, a 3-2 to two victory for the Dukes. Uh, and we have some uh, impact players from that tournament. Rylan? Uh, yeah, we'll start with, uh, so UMD, uh, Tim Stryker, really strong rookie for them. Uh, started really good debut, um, just playing fantastic dodgeball uh, right out of the gate. Uh, looked fantastic for them. Uh, UVA had another rookie, uh, Cam Penn. Um, again, just another fantastic debut. And JMU, we got the usual suspects. You know, we have Trent Schaffer, All-American, uh, Noah, Conyer Noah Conyers. You know, another All-American level player. Um, all guys just had fantastic performances. Uh, East Coast is very interesting this year. Um, you know, U UVA obviously uh, has the, the the displeasure of playing in a very loaded East Coast uh, region, but they look very much improved from uh, how they did last season. Uh, you know, they supposedly they had a very strong recruiting class, um, and that's done really well for them. I think that they're going to continue to improve over the course of the year. And I think, uh, you know, if they run it back at another one of these tournaments, um, they could probably steal a win. Uh, JMU is another very interesting school every year. Um, they fall into almost a habit of, I don't know if it's hiding their power level, um, but they, you know, it's hard to gauge how good JMU is every year. Obviously they blew the doors off of UVA five Oh, very decisive. Um, but their game against UV or UMD was very close, um, and this was a team that made the Final Four last year. They again early on in the season during the regular season they they have a habit of you know dropping games that you might not expect them to or keeping some games closer than you might think. Um, so it's it's going to be interesting to see you know if come nationals come later in the season they start to turn the corner that they do uh, you know every se every year at nationals every time they whenever it's it's go time they really do turn on the burners when it matters. 
Um, and yeah, with that, yes. we'll move on to the, uh, the Clifton Heights Classic. So the Clifton Heights Classic happened down in Cincinnati, and we saw a bunch of teams go to this tournament. We saw Ohio State, the University of Miami, uh, Western Michigan, and Northern Kentucky, and the B team from uh, Cincinnati. This tournament had a lot of storylines, but before we get to that, let's go through the scores real quick. The first matchup of the day saw Ohio State play Miami, and Miami, although they lost, showed that they have some extreme firepower heading into this year. At Nationals, we saw them take a point off Michigan State, and I really think that this team, the Red Hawks, are growing, and they're going to be one of the teams to watch out from the Ohio region. But overall, Ohio State won that game 4-2. to two. Western Michigan then played its first game against Northern Kentucky in a 5-2 victory. Once again, as we saw at the Buckeye opener, Northern Kentucky, a really good team for coming right out of the gate. Obviously, they have veteran leadership uh, with Wes Peters and Kevin yeah. Skiba coaching they, them. And oh, yeah, yep. they, they, they kept that game close. It was 2-2 uh, two, two at half. Uh, you know, WMU kind of ran away with it at the end there. But they're, they're looking like they can start to really compete with, uh, with solid uh, programs already. Yes, and uh, more to come from Northern Kentucky. Let's move on to the next game. Cincinnati beat Miami five to nothing. Uh, since it was Cincinnati's first game of the day, they were fresh. Miami was a little tired from OSU. An unlucky scoreline uh, for the Red Hawks, but a good victory to start out the day for Cincinnati. Then Western Michigan played Cincinnati's B team, and this was a tale of two halves. Rylan, do you want to talk about this? Yeah. Uh, so UCB. Um Funny enough, actually made history this weekend. Uh, they became the first ever uh, B team to defeat an A team. Uh, not in this match, uh, but they were up 2-0 on WMU at the half. Um, and then WMU came storming back in the second half to, you know, take the win 3-2. to But I think it's pretty scary to, uh, you know, to think of how much depth uh, UCB has that they are capable of playing and hanging with and beating, uh, you know, established a teams in the league. Um, it's, that's an insane amount of depth. And that's, that's a brand new, you know, milestone that a, a team has achieved. So congratulations to UCB. They played fantastic all weekend. Yes, they did. And going on to the rest of the matchups, OSU played uh, Cincinnati in a rematch of the ODC final last year. OSU beat uh, Cincinnati 3-2 to two in probably the closest game we've seen all year so far in any tournament. Uh, UCB, as we said earlier, beat the A-team for the first time in NCAA, NCDA history. They beat Northern Kentucky 3-2. to two. Although Northern Kentucky was on the losing side of this game, they still showed tremendous growth and talent. And I'm certainly looking them to grow out of the South region and really put a stomp on... Uh, the southern region this year heading into the next game the red hawks beat the broncos of western michigan three to two in a game that i think it could have been a coin flip how it went and we exactly got the that it was a coin flip a uh, tale of two halves really miami showed out they got the victory uh osu then beat ucb five to one in a and round out the day, Cincinnati beat Northern Kentucky four to nothing. And heading on to the key players from the tournament, Ryland. Uh, yeah, no, we had uh, so Elijah Thomas for OSU. Uh, one of the biggest reasons for them beating UC this week. Um, just it huge closing out some points. Uh, held onto a point at half to stop UC from taking a point right before halftime, uh, making some incredibly cr clutch plays in you know two v two scenarios. Just fantastic performance all around. One of the biggest reasons why they won this week or why they beat UC this week. Um, yeah, uh, these UC OSU matchups are some of the most entertaining dodgeball we've gotten all season. Every time they see each other, it really is must watch. Um, I encourage everyone to keep <laughs> watching and tuning into those games as long as they happen. Um, for WMU, we got Ryan Allor and um, Chase Rosen. Um, fantastic veteran performances. Um, you know, Allor very well could end up being an All-American this season. And Chase Rosen has made incredible leaps and bounds, you know, very strong arm, um, playing really well. And he's going to be a great centerpiece player for WMU going forward. Uh, Miami, we got Max Edling and uh, rookie uh, Evan Van Cleave. Um, Max Edling is a absolute monster on the court, just a threat everywhere to catch strong arm, it really becoming one of the best players out there right now. Uh, I expect him to, 
<clears throat> really help take Miami to the next level this year. And Van Cleve, again, another fantastic uh, NCDA de uh, debut this week. A uh, lot of fantastic rookies. And uh, UCB had a couple of shoot shout outs as well. Uh, we got Alex Becker and Jake Herman. So again, a lot of talent, even on these B teams. Uh, the, the depth of the league is getting fantastic. Um, it's always good to see just how much talent is happening when you have, again, teams like this that can beat an A team um, as a B team, you know? Um, that's always a good thing for the league. It's it's crazy to think of, you know, how far UC as a program has come since they've started out. Uh, and we got one more tournament for you guys to, as well. Uh, we got the Dattlebaum Classic down south. Yes, the southern region is alive and well once again. And although there was three schools at this tournament at the Dattlebaum Classic of Georgia Southern, Ole Miss playing in their first ever tournament as a uh, team and uh, North Georgia, who made it to nationals last year. It is great to see the Southern Region back in the NCDA. To start off the day, Georgia Southern beat Ole Miss six to two in the Rebels' first game as a club. I mean, not as a club. Sorry, as a team. My bad, uh, Price. If you're watching this, um, in the next game, uh, North Georgia beat Ole Miss five to two, and to round out the day, North Georgia came out on top over Georgia Southern five to two, and. We have a few players to talk about from this tournament, uh, specifically from Ole Miss, as it was their first tournament. We'd like to shout out Blake Sanders and Sahara Wiles Kohler. Both played very well yeah. in a team. Yeah. Do you want to take it over, Rylan? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Blake Sanders was voted the uh, tournament MVP. Um, really good performance. Uh, Ole Miss obviously only came with about eight or nine players. Um, but looked very good. Th this whole tournament was essentially three new teams. You know, at UNG's, UNG and GSU have been around for a while, and UNG was at Nationals last year, but they, they really are all reloading. Um, UNG is, I believe, the only team that had pre-COVID uh, NCDA players on it. Um, yeah. So Al Alex Phillips for them looked absolutely dominant, um, you know, looked fantastic at that tournament. Um, and again, for Ole Miss, um, Sahara Wiles Kohler, um, clutched a very key, uh, 3v1, uh, for Ole Miss against, uh, UNG, uh, had a fantastic performance. Uh, she's going to be one of the really strong women to look out for in this league. Uh, that's another great thing about this tournament is that, uh, you know, it, there were a lot of women playing and it. it's looks like looking like it's, uh, like the South is going to be another great source for, uh, women's talent and development. Um, moving on, we got uh, Samuel Martinez for uh, UNG and Thomas Smith for GSU. Um, yeah, really fun tournament to watch. You know, it was three essentially brand new programs really starting to get their foot in for the league. I know everyone there had a great time. Um, but yeah, we're really excited to see how the Southern region keeps developing. Really hope that these guys can make it out to some more tournaments this year and maybe uh, maybe even push up north a little bit and see some of these other teams up here. So, yeah, that would be great. Maybe we should travel down south to go play Ole Miss. That too. I would love to see other teams, uh, you know, come down south and play against some of these other uh, southern squads. You know, they, they don't get a lot of love down there just because of how far the travel distance is. But I would love to see them, uh, you know, get some more experience, play some more teams this year. That would be fantastic. And yeah, anything else yes. to add, Mitch? No, um, it was a great weekend for dodgeball. And uh, we have a... Uh, a lot of tournaments coming up, so keep your yeah. eye out for that. Yeah, two, two weeks uh, we got pink out. Yeah, at Akron. Be on the lookout for that. Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately I won't be there, so that's going to stink. But um, we also have the Penn State tournament. That's next month, right? Yeah, that one's a little ways out. Um, but the one definitely to look out for right now, about two weeks from now, um, about a week and a half, uh, is going to be Akron. Um, Pink out. It's always one of the biggest tournaments of the year. A lot of teams going to be there. Um, and yeah, some more really good dodgeball. We'll have some out of state matchups. Um, and yeah, a lot, lot of great, a uh, lot of great dodgeball coming up. So make sure you stay tuned in for that. Uh, and yeah, with that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, that wraps up episode three of the Neutral Zone Rewind. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Have a good one.